Hello from Shanghai, my name is Artem and this is the first episode of China Cultural News. China moves so quickly and it's hard to really know what is going on here. So this series I'm here to keep you updated about the most interesting things that happened in China in the last month in culture and lifestyle. The red year is finally gone. Yes, it was not over December 31st. According to the traditional Chinese calendar or lunar calendar, the new year has just begun on February 12th, when the world formally entered the year of the ox, and the entire country had a long seven-day holidays. Many people may have heard of years being named after animals, but do you know where it comes from? For millennia, ancient Chinese people relied on a calendar system to calculate record time, dates and years. At the core of these measures is the Chinese zodiac, a group of 12 animal symbols each assigned to a new year that repeats every 12 years. You probably know about them, but let's repeat the whole list. The 12 animals are red, ox, tiger, rabbit, dragon, snake, horse, goat, monkey, rooster, dog and pig, appearing in the same order, meaning we are in year 2 of 12 year cycle. These days, Chinese people use the zodiac animals as horoscope, less as a calendar device. The birth animal sign can be clues for people to discover personality traits, decide on suitable romance partners and predict fortunes in the coming year. For example, a person born in the year of the ox is known to be hardworking, dependable, simple, honest, dedicated to the work, enduring, intelligent and disciplined. They are even tempered and logical thinkers which makes them great leaders. Oxen made great lawyers, doctors, teachers, authors, social workers, police officers, politicians and consultants. People born in the year of the ox work best with people born in the year of the rat, snake or rooster. They struggle with goats, dragons and horses. And actually I'm a horse and I hope this year will be okay for me. Uh, wait, <laughs> that's, that, that's a not good sign. Anyway, let's see which famous people were born in the year of the ox. Princess Diana, XX Tension, Paul Walker, Saddam Hussein… Wait, who wrote this list? Anyway, what about you? Do you believe in the Chinese zodiac? Does yours match your personality? Tell me in the comments below. We keep talking about Lunar New Year and what is one of the most popular associations with it for Chinese people? Home baos, red packets. Red envelopes with money. This money is also called Yasu Qian, which literally means pressure age money, but it actually originally meant contract evil spirit money due to an ancient tradition. But even a lot of Chinese people don't know that. But I know. During the Chinese New Year, humbaos are typically given by the married to the unmarried, most of whom are children. If you are an unmarried adult, you are still regarded as a child when it comes to receiving humbao. So here's a usual tip. Plan your wedding after Chinese New Year to receive more money. A common question is how much money should I give? Well, the amount of money inside depends on many factors, it also depends on the region. There is a map of Humbao money amount created by the Watsai financial app. Let's look at it. The record belongs to Putian city in Fujian province. Children there receive 12,000 renminbi Humbaos. In Beijing, it's 2,900, Shanghai, 1,600. Interesting that people from the richest province, China, Guangdong, give the lowest valued Humbaos, only 50 renminbi. I guess that's how they stay rich. Recently, the tradition has left behind its tangible form and entered the digital era. In 2014, the popular Chinese messaging app WeChat launched a new function that allows users send virtual red envelopes inside the app. So now many people don't even use cash. But tradition tangible cash kumbaos are still here. For example, this granny gave out 800,000 renminbi home bows to her family. Even married adults also receive her money. She said she earned this money just to renting out her apartment. I let her rent me out, if you know what I mean. Chinese New Year is an important time for Chinese people to head home and reunite with family. However, the recent COVID-19 outbreaks have forced a lot of people to stay put. 
people were advised not to return to their hometowns to reduce the spread of the virus. As a result, the overall traffic volume by railroad, air or waterway transport during the Spring Festival in China decreased more than 70 and 40 percent compared to 2019 and 2020. So many people stayed in the places they live and work. That's why usually empty during this time big cities such as Shanghai were crowded with people who went out for entertainment and shopping. I also stayed in Shanghai and learned how to eat the whole KFC bucket of my stomach without blocking the view of my laptop. It's harder than it sounds, don't smile. So people unable to visit relatives this year are attempting to avoid being stuck in an apartment with them flogged the movie theaters with record numbers. The box office in February in China broke the 10 billion RMB mark. Since the beginning of 2021, China's takings are estimated almost 14 billion RMB. It's the same as North America got in the entire 2020. On the first day of New Year alone, more than 34 million people went to cinema, fueling an unprecedented 1.7 billion RMB single day sales. And all this despite coronavirus related restrictions being in place in many theaters, including socially distanced seating and mandatory masks. So which movies were the most successful? The top one is Hai Mom, a Chinese comedian's directorial debut about a woman who travels back in time to see her dead mother, has become the fourth highest grossing film in the country's history and the highest ever for a female director. Even the description of this movie makes me want to cry. Also, isn't that a subplot of Avengers Endgame? Kind of similar, right? So Jia Ling's Hai Mom opened a fortnight ago and has drawn ticket sales of more than 4.5 billion RMB. It was rated 8.3 out of 10 on Douban, a Chinese movie rating website. It is the fastest Chinese movie to have sold that quickly. Another blockbuster is Detective Chinatown 3. It became the highest per sale box office sales in the Chinese film history with over 1 billion RMB. It also crossed 4 billion mark locally. What is your favorite Chinese movie? Let me know in the comments. How many Chinese YouTubers do you know? Chinese vlogger Li Ziqi set a new record for most subscribers for a Chinese language channel on YouTube with more than 14 million subscribers. To date, she has amassed more than 2 billion views on her YouTube channel. 31 years old, Li is a food and country life blogger, entrepreneur, and internet celebrity. Li Ziqi's videos have attracted fans from all over the world who love to watch her seemingly idyllic life in the countryside that is steeped in traditional Chinese culture. She picked up many of her skills, such as weaving, cooking, and farming, when she was a child, learning from her grandparents who lived in the countryside. The interesting thing is that she doesn't speak in her videos at all. Sometimes Chinese characters appear on the screen, but that's all. I wonder if one day she starts speaking and has a super strong farmer accent. <laughs> yeah, like this. So actually, I think that would be awesome. Another Chinese YouTube star is Dian Xi Xiaoge or A Penjie, who has over 7 million followers. She's from Yunnan province and contrasting with Li Ziqi, she speaks in her video. She makes a video about her village in the Chinese highlands where she cooks with seasonal ingredients and traditional techniques. Do you have any Chinese vlogger to recommend? Share with us in the comments. Less than one year till Beijing Winter Olympic Games. In February, Beijing lit the Olympic flame to kick off one year countdown to honor Beijing's status as the world's first city to host both summer and winter Olympics. The 2022 torch features a similar design to the 2008 Games main cauldron, which resembles a giant scroll highlighting the legacy of the Olympic spirit in the Chinese capital. The opening of the Games will be on February 4 next year. I think they should use this design for their logo. It would be much cooler, don't you think so? An airport expansion project in China's northern west Shanxi province became a big surprise for construction workers. Archaeologists surveying the construction site at Xi'an Shenyang International Airport discovered more than 4,000 historical relics, including some 
3,500 tombs. Shanxi is well known for its archaeological sites, including the famed Terracotta Army. The provincial capital Xi'an has also served as the seat of government for 13 royal lineages in Chinese history, including the Qin, Han, and Tang dynasties. There is no information yet on whether Brendan Fraser will star in the Mami, new Mami about how Terracotta Army is going for vacation to Bali Island or something like this. I think it would be like, look really sick. Another discovery was made in Sichuan province. Scientists found a new species of Nemorade and named it after Chinese actors Hu Ge and Louis Ku Tin Lok for their contributions to education and environmental protection. The species is officially named Nemora Hu Ge Ku Tin Lok Korum. It sounds like a spell from Harry Potter. Naming new species after popular personality is not an unconventional practice internationally. Grovelinus Leonardo DiCaprioi, a species of Riffel beetle, and Spintharus Leonardo DiCaprioi, a species of the Theridid spider, are both named after American actor and environmentalist Leonardo DiCaprio. Agra Catawins Latae, it's a species of carabid beetle, is named after English actress Kate Winslet. Okay, hope there are more undiscovered species left in the world. So it would be Artemis Danovae, named by me someday. And I hope it will be not a beetle or worm or something bigger. Imagine if Quora decided to take on Netflix. That's effectively what happened in China, where Jihu, the country's biggest knowledge sharing community, has announced it is developing its first TV series. Jihu released three minute trailer for Han May Project 2021, a cerebral sci fi thriller and the platform's first foray into television and film. While details about this project remain scant, it will reportedly be based on Sad People, a 2015 novel by sci fi writer Ha Si. Let's take a look. Oh my God. Okay, Actually, it looks pretty good. No information on the premiere date yet, so we'll follow us and we will let you know when we get any updates. And in the end, the video of the month. What could be better than dancing Chinese grannies? Nothing. Look at this one. And 33 year old woman Zheng from Sichuan province has attracted more than 600,000 followers on country's social media platforms with her videos of herself dancing and modeling. That's all for this time. Thank you for watching China Cultural News. Subscribe and give us a thumbs up and tell me in the comments which topics you are interested in. See you soon. Bye.